Have you noticed that we are not in a hurry to get over Christmas? If you look at the nonverbal cues, the sanctuary is still decorated for Christmas, isn't it? The creche is still over the altar area. Christmas trees are up. Sanctuary is still decorated. And we're going to sing Christmas songs today. Um, I don't know about you, but I like it. Do any of you? I'm not in a rush. You know people who on December 26th are like their tails on fire. They've got to take down everything and put it away and get on to the next thing. Uh, not so in the church. In the church, after Christmas, we continue the season of Christmas with a season called Epiphany, in which, as Janet's told the story and the liturgist has told the story of the wise man who came to see Jesus and how long after his birth might that have been? Could have been a couple of years. Uh, it could have been quite a while. And so in the church, we're not in a gut-busting rush to get beyond Christmas. And so today, uh, to start a, a new sermon series in January, I wanted to build on what we have done and also uh, acknowledge that out in the world, the world has changed the calendar, hasn't it? So for a new year for 2018, this series will be called Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Now, if uh, the Old Testament reading irritated you, I would advise you to contact your physician and ask them for a little something, something. Because it's been incredible to me, churches like ours and others who talk a lot about how important the Bible is, when I look at their services, they might read three sentences of Scripture a week. And you say the Bible's important? So we're going to have two Scripture lessons each week read by the, the liturgist in addition to what I preach on. But in case some of you were irritated by how long the Old Testament lesson was, get over it. We talk a lot about how important creation is. I even talk to people who are Christians who debate that, and I say, when was the last time you read Genesis? Well, I'm too busy debating it. Well, maybe you ought to go back and read it. And if you're in a church, when was the last time you heard creation read in worship? So you heard Marcia do a very nice job of reading chapter 1, verse 1 in Genesis through chapter 2, verse 3. I'm going to pick it up there, and we're going to continue the reading in chapter 2, verse 4. Four, this is the Word of God. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created, in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, when no bush of the field was yet in the land, and no small plant of the field had yet sprung up, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain on the land, and there was no man to work the ground, and a mist was going up from the land and was watering the whole face of the ground. Then the Lord God formed man the man of dust from the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living creature. And the Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground the Lord God made to spring up every tree that is pleasant in sight and good for food. The tree of life was in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil." A river flowed out of Eden to water the garden, and there it divided and became four rivers. The name of the first is the Pishon. It is the one that flowed out of the whole land of Havilah, and there there is gold. And the gold of that land is good. Bedelium and onyx stone are there. The name of the second river is Gion. It is the one that flowed around the whole land of Cush. And the name of the third river is the Tigris, and the, that flows out of east of Assyria. And the fourth river is the Euphrates. The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work it and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, You may surely eat of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. Then the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper fit for him. Now out of the ground the Lord God had formed every beast of the field and every bird of the heavens and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. 
And whatever the man called every living creature, that was its name. The man gave names to all livestock and to the birds of the heavens and to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found a helper fit for him. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man. And while he slept, took one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man he made into a woman and brought her to the man. Then the man said, This at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother, and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. And the man and his wife were both naked, and were not ashamed. May God add his blessing to the reading of his holy word. We are starting the year uh, by reading the beginning of the Bible. I think that's a good idea every year. As you start something new, read the beginning of the Scriptures. And there are what some scholars think are two different accounts of creation. Now, I'm not saying I agree with everything I'm about to tell you. I'm just telling you, if you went to seminary today, this is what they would teach you. There are two different creation accounts. The one starts at chapter 1, verse 1, goes through chapter 2, verse 3. That's the one you heard Marcia read. The second creation account, as scholars look at it, starts in chapter 2, verse 4, and goes on through 25. There's another reason why they think there are two different stories or two different accounts. One of them is the name that is used for God. In chapter 1, what name is used for the divine? If you don't have your Bible open, it's real hard to see because I don't have it on the screen for you. It is God. The name is God, and it is in Hebrew, Elohim. Did anybody notice what was the name for the divine in chapter 2, verse 4 and later? Lord God, which in Hebrew is Yahweh, and sometimes transliterated into Jehovah. And they see from the sources that they came from two different places because they used different names for the divine. Now, also, if, if you sit down with a scholar, they're going to compare those two stories. The first account, which Marcia read, uh, human beings are created when? After everything else has been created. In the second account, which I read, when, is, when are human beings created? Beginning. And then everything else is set around them. I think in both accounts, the purpose is to show how important we are in God's creation and to His plan, that we are part of that creation. Now, I'm not saying, by the way, that I believe or accept everything that's on these two charts. I'm just telling you this is what scholars do when they try and look at a Scripture and try and analyze it. Certainly the clearest thing to me, if you look at chapter 1 and chapter 2, you can see two different names for God clearly. You can see that easily. And uh, that'll tell you about uh, the beginning of the Scriptures. I think it's a good idea that we start the year talking about creation, recounting these good words that remind us of the Bible's beginning and of ours. We talk a lot about creation, but we don't often read it. Stop and think about how often have you ever heard creation read in the church, except for a verse or two here or there. In the last book of the Bible, God says in Revelation 1.8, I am the Alpha and the Omega, who is and who was and who is to come. God talks about uh, being the God who is, that is the past, or who was, that's, excuse me, is is present, was is past, and who is to come is future. He talks about the threefoldness of time. And that's appropriate to talk about because, again, we've switched to calendar this past week, didn't we? I don't know about you, but the longer I live, I am getting worse and worse at judging how much time has passed about something. I used to be pretty good at that. And now if someone says, how long ago has it been since such and so happened? I may say two years and it was actually ten. Because I'm getting worse and worse, apparently, at judging how much time has passed. Um, 
God says, I am the Alpha and the Omega who is right now, who was in the past, and who is to come. And then when you get uh, to, to those letters, by the way, he says, I am Alpha and Omega. Some of you know what that means. What's Alpha and Omega? They're the first and the last letters of the Greek alphabet. And in English, it would be like saying from A to Z, from beginning to end. In Revelation 21, at the end of the Bible, Jesus says this, I am Alpha and Omega. He says, I am the beginning and the end. So as you and I begin a new year, maybe this is a good time to get rooted in Him who is above time. The Scriptures tells us that time means nothing to God. Remember in one of the Psalms? It says to God, you know, a day is like a thousand years, a thousand years like a day. Time is really important to us in some circumstances. But to God, it's not a problem. So as you and I start this new year together, by the way, how many of you are glad to be out going someplace? I'm just so happy to see your face. Uh, I'm so happy to have my face seen. Uh, because as I came, by the way, as I drove in this morning, in case you were wondering what was happening in downtown St. Leonard or Port Republic, it was about minus five, minus six this morning down in the valley. I feel like I'm back in Elkins, West Virginia. It feels like Elkins outside to me right this morning. Um, but some of us maybe have been in the house a little bit this week, and it's been a rough week, hasn't it? Weather-wise, temperature and all of that, and it's good to just be out and be together this morning. So as we start this first worship service of the new year, as we think about how time is moving on, as we think about a new year and a new opportunity, let's get ourselves rooted in the one who is Alpha and Omega, who is above time, before time, and 10,000 years after we're gone, who will be God? God will be God. He'll still be there, won't he? In the scriptures on Christmas Eve, I preach from John 1, where it includes Jesus in the creation process. It says, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God, talking about Jesus. And then it says, nothing was made without Him. Christ is involved in creation because He is God, and He is part of that whole process. So let me ask you this question. How many of you are done with 2017? Glad that it's gone? There are some of us for whom 2017 was painful, was difficult, was hard. And if that includes you or me, then we're looking forward to something different, aren't we? We're looking forward to that new year, and we want God to bring about some new alphas and omegas, some beginnings and ends. We're looking for that. Well, how about Trinity Church as we gather for the first time on this January Sunday, um, kind of where are we as a church? Where do you think we are? Where do you think we've come? 2017, in a lot of ways, was difficult. God realigned a lot of things, changed a lot of things, and has brought us to a new day. Um, this is not all of what I want you to think about, but I want you to think about this. In 2017 and in 2016, 10 and 12 full members of this church died in those two years. That's a lot of change. Now the good news about Trinity is, and we're very rare as United Methodist churches go, because we took in more people than died. Many United Methodist churches are not doing that, are they? And so we're, we're glad about that, we're happy about that. If you have been part of Trinity Church, can you think of somebody new that God brought into your life here at the church? You, you do if you do something especially other than just come to church. If you just come to church, plop down, get up and leave, and we never see you otherwise, that may be more difficult. But if you are involved in any ministry, if you're involved in any group, chances are very good that in your church life, God brought somebody into your life in those two years that you did not know before then. That's a good thing, isn't it? And that's a thing that Trinity has going for us 
that not every United Methodist Church does. What is our mission statement? Would you read it aloud with me again one more time? Let's read together. Trinity United Methodist Church's mission is to ignite such a passion for Jesus Christ and His teachings that it sets our world on fire. I don't know about you, but I like fire today. Today, I like the fire. The fire is good. It's good to have some warmth. Um, Before I ever got to Trinity, when I first understood that we would be coming to Trinity and I saw the mission statement, I liked it because I like passion. I like people with passion, people who want to be passionately dedicated to something. And uh, I would rather have someone who is passionately trying and failing than someone sitting on their duff and coldly doing nothing. Do you understand what I just said? It's better to be passionate about something and occasionally be wrong than to sit and do nothing and then be right or neutral most of the time. God has called us to be set on fire for Jesus Christ. And I don't know about you, did anybody with me in the last couple nights thank the Lord every time your furnace kicked on? Middle of the night, my heat my heat pump turned on. I'll go, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We have a, we've even got, even got a fireplace in the, in the uh, living room. Turn that bad boy on in case the electric goes off. The propane is supposed to kick in. And, but every time during the night I would hear that heater turn on, I would thank God. Did you? Thank you, Lord, for a warm place to sleep. Thank you, Lord, that my pipes haven't busted yet. Thank you, Jesus. The water is flowing. And I even I have the luxury of hot and cold water. I don't know about you. I'm kind of fancy at my house. I got hot and cold water. If I want it, I just bring it on forth. Do you realize how fortunate we are to have that? We ought to come into God's house and thank Him, shouldn't we today? Thank you, Lord, for a roof that didn't leak most of the time. Thank you, God, for a warm place to sleep. Thank you, Lord, for a church. And then, in addition to my home, I get to come into a church where the furnaces worked today. By the way, in case you didn't know, a little Trinity trivia, there are four heating plants under this roof that have to work in order to heat us. And guess how many of them work today? There you go. Thank you, Lord. Isn't it good? Glory to God. Glory to God. And so it's nice to have a warm place to gather. It's also nice to have some folks in here. If you are passionate about Jesus Christ, we want to set you on fire with the Holy Spirit and send us out. The purpose of all of this is so that we will follow Jesus. Trinity, just like us in our individual lives, we've been through some difficulties in 2017, but perhaps God was aligning us for certain purposes and certain reasons. And in fact, over the last week, I read an article about how churches are changing and many of the things that have happened to us, the article said, this is what's going to have to happen in order for a church to survive in 2018 and beyond. Many of the things that it mentioned in that article, we have had happen to us or we're in the process of having happen to us. Now, there are some of us who love winter. Anybody here love winter like me? Just a couple of us. How many of you are thinking about that lyric you just sang? In the cold of winter, there's a spring that waits to be. How many of you are waiting for that? All right. (laughs) He who is Alpha and Omega knows all those things, doesn't he? And he is above all time and before all time and will be after all time. As we start this new year together in a very cold and snowy week. Um, This altar is open if you'd like someone to pray with you or to talk with you. I'll be here for a few minutes. I would love to do that. I can anoint you with oil for healing, whatever might be helpful. And if you're sick, don't be afraid to touch me. I have uh, pumps of hand sanitizer. I can bathe myself in it after church if need be. Don't be afraid. Jesus spoke to the lepers. I'll be glad to shake hands with you. Don't worry about it. Um, But wherever God is leading you, wherever God's calling you, I pray that you have a happy, a healthy, and a very holy 2018. Go with the peace of Christ in Jesus' name. Amen.